for detailed instructions and safety warnings, refer to the assembly guide and operator's manual. There are assembly tools provided with the zero-turn riding mower, 12 and 14 millimeter open-ended wrenches, 13 and 15 millimeter open-ended wrenches, and a T30 screwdriver. You'll need to provide a torque wrench, tire pressure gauge, and a socket wrench with 12 millimeter, 13 millimeter, 14 millimeter, and 15 millimeter sockets, a socket extension, and scissors. Step one, unpacking. Remove plastic covering from the mower and set aside. Remove all boxes containing loose parts, assembly hardware, and documentation and place where easily accessible. Do not discard the packaging material until you've carefully inspected and have satisfactorily operated the product. Carefully set aside the assembly tools to prepare for mower assembly. Use socket wrenches or provided open-end wrenches to remove the bolts that are securing each corner post and side braces to the frame bottom. Then remove the post and corner braces. Next, cut the plastic zip ties securing the front and rear wheel axles to the frame. Inspect all parts carefully to make sure no breakage or damage occurred during shipping. If any parts are damaged or missing, please call 1-800-860-4050 for assistance. Note, mowers should be assembled while positioned on the frame bottom. Step two, connecting the battery. When shipped from the factory, the mower's batteries are disconnected. To connect the batteries, remove the wiring cover by pressing the tabs on both sides and lift the cover off. Then connect into the battery quick connect plugs together and reinstall the wiring cover. Step three, installing the seat. Remove the shoulder bolts and the lock nuts from the seat mounting brackets. Next, place the seat assembly over the mounting brackets and align the holes. Reinstall the shoulder bolts and lock nuts on both sides and tighten securely using the 14 mm socket wrench or provide an open-ended wrench on the shoulder bolts and the 13 mm socket wrench or provide an open-end wrench on the lock nuts. The lock nuts should mount on the inside of the mounting bracket. Locate the seat safety interlock cable, then attach to plug on the seat and place seat down onto the unit. Step four, installing the drive levers. Remove the hex head bolts from the drive lever mounting bracket with 13 mm socket or 13 mm provided open-ended wrench. Then align the holes on the drive lever with the holes on the drive lever mounting bracket. Reinstall the bolts and tighten securely with a 13 mm socket or 13 mm open-ended wrench. You'll notice the bottom hole is wider to allow the user to set it to their preference. Repeat to install second drive lever and make sure to use the same holes for mounting the drive lever on each side. The levers must be even when installed. Step five, installing the towing plate. Align the holes in the towing plate with the holes in the rear cross member. To attach the towing plate to the cross member, install the hex head bolts and fasten with a 13 millimeter socket wrench or 13 millimeter provided open-ended wrench. Step six, checking the tire pressure. Check the air pressure in all tires before use. Improper air pressure will affect handling, steering response, traction, tire life, level cutting, and operator comfort. Be sure tires are inflated to 19 PSI in the front tires and 18 PSI in the back tires. Warning, be sure to wear safety goggles when checking the tire pressure carefully. Caution, too much air in the tire could cause the tire to burst, causing serious personal injury. Step seven, driving the mower off of the packaging. Once assembly is complete, place the handles in the neutral position and raise your cutting deck to its highest position. Install the start key and turn to on position. Make sure the red blade engage knob is down and press the slow speed button. Slowly and carefully, drive the mower off the frame in reverse while looking down and behind. For forward removal, remove the two posts at the frame base. Raise the cutting deck to the highest position, then place a ramp next to the frame base. Caution, driving the mower off the frame in the forward direction without a ramp can cause damage to the mower's cutting deck. Step eight, final preparation. The mower features a safety interlock system to protect the operator by shutting off the blades if the operator leaves the seat with the blades running. Test the system to be sure it's working correctly. Position the mower on a level surface. Set the parking brake. 
Make sure drive levers are in the neutral position. Install start key. Turn to the on position. Raise blade engage knob to activate blades. Briefly lift off the seat, but do not get off the mower. The blades should shut off within five seconds. If they don't, shut the blades off by pressing down on the red engage knob, and then verify you connected the safety interlock cable as described in step three, installing the seat. If the cable's connected but the system still doesn't function, contact customer service at 1-800-860-4050. Do not operate the mower until the safety interlock system has been repaired. Step nine, charge the mower. Mower batteries must be charged overnight before first use. To verify mower batteries are fully charged, check the battery level indicator. To charge, insert charge plug into the charging port on the mower, making sure it's properly connected. Then connect the charger to a power supply using a normal household current of 120 volt, 60 hertz, AC only. Remove the charger from the mower once it's fully charged and ready to use. Make sure to always charge the mower when it's not in use and do not charge in an area of extreme heat or cold. If it's not possible to leave the mower charger connected, make sure to charge the batteries fully at least once a month. Warning, to avoid accidental starting or movement of the mower that could result in death or serious injury, always remove the start key and set the parking brake when leaving the mower unattended. Step 10, verify mower condition. Inspect the entire product for damaged, missing, or loose parts, such as screws, nuts, bolts, caps, etc. Tighten securely all fasteners and caps and do not operate this product until any missing or damaged parts are replaced. If any parts are damaged or missing, please call 1-800-860-4050 for assistance.